Harriet Beecher Stowe was one of Hartford, Connecticut's most famous residents. She was born in Litchfield, Connecticut in 1811, and as a young woman, she first lived in Hartford when she was a student at the Hartford Female Seminary on Pratt Street that was run by her older sister, Catherine Beecher. Harriet is most famous for writing the anti-slavery novel, Uncle Tom's Cabin. By the time she wrote the book, in the early 1850s, she was living in Brunswick, Maine, where her husband Calvin Stowe was teaching at Bowdoin College. Many people may not know, but that was the first of nearly 30 books she would write in her career. In 1873, she moved into a house on Forest Street in Hartford, where she would live with her retired husband and two unmarried twin daughters until her death in 1896. Today you can visit this house as part of the Harriet Beecher Stowe Center, but this was actually her second Hartford home. Almost a decade before, in 1864, she'd moved into what was truly her dream house, a Gothic mansion she named Oak Home. So where was Oak Home located, and what became of it? Let's find out. <music> By the early 1860s, Harriet Beecher Stowe and her husband Calvin were living in Andover, Massachusetts, where Calvin was teaching at the Andover Theological Seminary. With her husband soon to retire, Harriet had planned to move to the Hartford neighborhood called Nook Farm, where two of her sisters already lived, Mary Beecher Perkins and Isabella Beecher Hooker, both married to lawyers. Isabella lived in a house on Forest Street that still exists today, although it's been much altered and now has apartments. Architect Octavius Jordan had done a major redesign of Isabella's house in the Gothic Revival style, and her sister Harriet hired the same architect to design her own large house, which was to be built on four and a half acres of land that she'd acquired in 1860. This is a section of a map from the Baker and Tilden Atlas of Hartford City and County, published in 1869, five years after Harriet Beecher Stowe's home was completed. To the north is Farmington Avenue, and here is Forest Street, which was the heart of the neighborhood called Nook Farm. At the intersection of Forest and Hawthorne Streets is the home where Isabella lived with her husband, John Hooker, the lawyer. South of the railroad tracks is a street that Harriet herself laid out called Stowe Street. And here is the house that she built called Oak Home, which is here listed under the name of her husband, Professor C.E. Stowe. Their large wooded property was right next to the Park River, which today runs underground through a conduit. So during the construction between 1862 and 1864, Harriet herself personally supervised all the details of building what she called her house with eight gables. Even the digging of sewers and arranging for heaps of manure to be delivered for her gardens. Olcombe was an interesting house. It had a classic Gothic Revival design with details like pointed arch windows with drip molds, and decoratively carved barge boards. There was a side chapel and a huge two-story conservatory in the rear for the plant-loving author. She paid for the house with money earned from her writing career, but the house was expensive to maintain and it was built at a time of high inflation during the Civil War. It may also have not been that well constructed because uh, there are stories of parts falling apart later on uh, and it really became a sinkhole for money. Also, factories were being constructed closer to the property, and the Park River was becoming more polluted. These are the reasons that, after living in it less than 10 years, Harriet and Calvin sold the house in 1870 and downsized. Uh, a few years later, they moved to the house that is now called the Harriet Beecher Stowe House, which had been built in 1871. They moved in in 1873. 
and that's the house, of course, that you can visit today. But what happened to Oakholm itself after the Stowe's left? Comparing the atlas that we already saw from 1869 with a later one published in 1880, you can see the development that has occurred. Stowe Street has now become part of Capitol Avenue, and a new residential neighborhood called Glenwood, which no longer exists today, has risen right next door. Oakholm's closest neighbor is still the Hartford Ice Company along the Park River. Factory buildings have appeared just to the north along the train tracks. Now here's the same area from a bird's eye view of Hartford published in 1877. Here Oakholm is circled. Just to the east is the ice company I just mentioned. To the west is the new neighborhood development and to the north are the factories. When we jump to a section of the Hartford Atlas published in 1896, much of the Stowe property has been taken up by the factory of the Hartford Cycle Company, which manufactured bicycles. The company was founded by Colonel Albert Pope, famous for Pope Park and Hartford Pope automobiles. Amazingly, Oakholm is still there being used as a storehouse. There's even a picture of it taken at this time that was printed in an article about the Hartford Cycle Works that appeared in McClure's Magazine in May of 1897. No longer a residence, the house still displays its Gothic Revival architectural detailing. This is the facade of the Cycle Works with a tower at the intersection of Capitol Avenue and Woodbine Street so Oakholm would be hidden behind that. Around 1901, the factory was acquired by the Underwood Typewriter Company, which would expand it to encompass even more land between Woodbine Street and the Park River. By the time the Hartford Atlas of 1917 was published, Oakholm was long gone, having been torn down in 1905. The massive Underwood factory complex was demolished about 50 years ago. The site of the former factory is now largely taken up by a large parking lot located just north of the Park Place Towers apartments and south of Capitol Avenue and I-84. Olcombe would have once stood close to the line of trees at the north end of the lot just south of the Underwood family apartments. The northernmost part of the Stowe Underwood lot is now taken up by the big office building you can see beyond the trees, which is located at the address of 25 Sigourney Street. So Harriet Beecher Stowe only lived in Oakholm less than a decade, and the house survived another 35 years, and then it was taken over by a huge factory which has now also been demolished. If you enjoyed this video, please consider hitting the like button. You can also subscribe to the channel, and please feel free to leave a comment below. Thank you for watching.